Hey guys, I'm going to be giving you a full moon reading, cardamancy reading for the Taurus astrological alignment taking place um, happening on Earth Day, April 22nd. It is still April 19, but I'm going to be delivering the cardamancy full moon reading for you at today, okay? So you've got two to three days for it to process and to really take center um, and to work to attain uh, the messages that are going to be delivered to you and for you. Okay, so we're going to be working with my deck that I've created, my um, medieval renaissance times type of cards. So let's get started, guys. I'm just wishing everybody a happy full moon. Um, okay, uh, do take note of things if you're having premonitions, visions, and dreams. Always do make sure that you're writing these things down, okay? I'm just gonna shuffle the cards this way because I'm gonna close my eyes. There's someone who um, should be working with Rose Quartz. I'm seeing Rose Quartz points, um, female, um, work with it. Uh, there's going to be a message in this card. As I said, Rose Quartz, this card came out. Um, it could be that you have very highly sensitive children um, and you need to take care of your heart and you need to, to bring in more unconditional support and love towards yourself first. And your kids are going to totally feel that vibe within you, okay? You could be from Europe, because I'm sensing something of Europe. If not, um, you can have a European background. Um, you need to bring in more of that pink heart chakra. Um, the heart chakra is also associated with green, but I'm seeing more rose quartz. Bring in that rose quartz for yourself, because um, your kids are going to feel that energy off of you, and that's, that's a very supportive of loving energy. This card is usually about, um, I see, uh, for teachers. It could be that so that person that I'm reading, that I'm picking up for, is naturally a teacher, um, has natural teaching abilities, and if not, if you're not actually in a school education, or if you're not actually um, a teacher, you could be someone like me who has a life experience, um, and part of your life purpose is to teach and, and educate people um, about their life experiences and what they've experienced in life and to do so in a very wise, compassionate, motherly way. Okay. It could also be that because you are a mom, your children, um, and if they're not children, they could be, you know, um, in their early twenties, mid twenties, but at the end of the day, they still see you as their mother and they see you as their spiritual guide and mentor because of that motherly bond that you have with them. Okay. So I'm just picking up that, um, there's that strong um, essence of uh, motherhood, and I just highly suggest that you work with that rose quartz in order to incorporate more of that love towards yourself, uh, take care of yourself, and then people will feel, your children, the people around you will feel more of that loving energy coming forth, okay? Whatever you do to yourself, however you treat yourself, it projects to the outer world, Okay, it projects to your family, your friends, into the outer world. If you have clients, if you have customers, if you have a business, if you have anything of that nature, it, it resonates outwards, okay? So, um, yeah, that's with this card right here, okay? Um, even though, like, I have red, I have a red theme going on today. I've got my garnet bracelet on my with the Isis wings and a heart, red nail polish, red lipstick. I've got my red curtains, my red headscarf, and a red tank. As you can see, it's my favorite color, um, Writer's Goddess. <laughs> and then the next card, as I'm saying that, came out, this one. And this is the Queen of Hearts. And the Queen of Hearts has been popping up left, right, and center within the last how many so readings with these with this deck. So, um, I, I actually was given a red rose the other day and it's right there and I should have brought it out, but 
Um, red is very much associated with your root. Um, and it could be that a lot of people that I'm, I'm meeting lately, they're like, they're going back to their ancestral lineage and they're finding more of their heritage and who they are. And, you know, that's your bloodline. And this is the color of your blood. It's, it's associated with your blood. It's associated, associated with your root chakra. It's associated with your roots, your veins, your essence, um, and things like that. So, um, this could also be the same lady who um, is motherly and is really <clears throat> coming forth with that feminine, strong, motherly essence within herself, a strong rooted woman. There's a lot of women out there who are naturally very strong and that's a great thing, okay? Uh, we need more stronger women. And women are strong, you know, if you can give birth to a child, take care of that child that makes you a very strong woman taking care of a child raising it taking care of a husband or even if you're doing it alone if you're single it's not easy it's one of the most difficult things to do and women deserve accolades okay and this is a very motherly card they deserve accolades so you know really take care of your heart take care of bring in more of that motherly or unconditional love with the rose quartz for yourself um forget another person at this point in time because um how you treat yourself how you take care of yourself you regularly attract that um to yourself and again the full moon okay is is coming of uh, the day of earth day okay so mother earth red earth um do you get what i mean and um it's also in taurus and taurus is a very motherly earthy um, symbol, a sign, astrological sign, okay? I'm just going to fix this camera right here. So, you know, be sure to look into these matters. Um, you know, if it helps you out, look out, look, look at, um, characteristics of the Taurus woman. Um, you can find that even if you're not a Taurus, um, you, you may find that you have certain characteristics and traits of a Taurian that you didn't know you have within yourself. You have to also look into mind that, um, although you have a sun sign in, in, in whatever it is, you also have a rising sign, you also have a moon sign in something, and then you have your entire birth chart, so your Venus can be in Taurus, your Mars can be in Taurus, your 7th house, your 6th house, your 5th house, so be sure to check and see and find out where your Taurian traits are, and this is not even just for women, this is for men too, okay, we're not just one astrological sign and I do mention in a lot of my videos that I don't necessarily believe in astrology um, but I do believe in learning more about ourselves more about our characteristics in the world around us so I have worked with astrology and I will regularly talk about astrology because there is a calendar that we go by regularly and um, I go by that and I go by numbers okay I don't have to necessarily believe in something in order to work with it it's just like People that have trust issues or people that um, feel the need to trust, you know, and or they their trust has been broken. So um, they have hard times with relationships. And my my thing is, I don't have to necessarily trust a situation or a person for me to, to you know, it's more of trusting myself. It's more having faith in myself. Everything starts with the self. Everything ends with the self. Everything comes back to the self. Okay. So these are very motherly, self-nurturing cards, which is great. So even if this comes across as a very feminine or a message for women, it's also symbolic for men too because men, men have that motherliness within themselves or they need to be nurtured or they need their femininity nurtured or they have an aspect of their selves that they, they need a motherly figure to, to give them that nurturance, okay? So uh, be sure to give that motherly nurturance towards yourself, okay guys? Um, take care of yourselves and what's wrong with working with rose quartz if you're a guy, okay? And if you're not and if you feel a connection to garnet because I'm wearing the color of that, work with garnet, okay? Garnet is a root stone. So let's pick up more messages.
Uh, new cards are coming out. Oh, as I say that. <laughs> so the full moon lays on a master number 22. And we're in April, so that's a four and another four. And then this card that popped out is a four. So um, this involves um, a home. It involves like an antique or classical place. Or it could be a home that you're moving to, or it could be an ambience, or it could be that you're just renovating your home, or you're a stylist, or you work with, you know what I mean, styling homes. As you can see, I've got, like, I like to style my house, my room, and stuff like that regularly. I've got stuff everywhere, like art artistic things, and I regularly change things up. And, um see if you can see up close there's paintings and four is a very stable secure number okay and um, it can also be that internally um, you're going through a renovation or a change a transformation and that change that you've been experiencing up into this full moon is and has allowed you to um, build that you know have that firm building Okay, so this doesn't necessarily mean that you are moving or that you have moved. It could be that, like I said, there has been up into this full moon, those changes that have led to this four because we have started with the three and three is about creation. And then it led to the four because we had the queen, the queen of hearts, which is motherly. So putting in that love during this process of, of creation, of changing, of transforming, shifting energetically, you know, and now it's led to that physical aspect. So, you know, there's um, energy involved with shifting things around. And if you go back to my March um, readings and stuff, I do mention that from the last how many years I shifted things around. I got rid of old stuff. I got rid of my old cabinets. My old dressers, I kept like one maybe, but I still moved everything around. I, I moved, I shifted everything. And when I did, it's, there's energy behind it. Things changed for me, you know. I started, you know, it helps with getting more clients. It helps with changing your mood. It helps with, it's, it's unfathomable the amount of stuff that it's capable of changing for you, okay. So be sure to look into this number. Be sure to look up the number four in numerology. Um, it could be that it's in your chart. It could be in your first name. It could be in your last name. It could be your first name and number, last name together. It could be in your personality karmic number or your life path number. Okay, be sure to check that out. So, Okay, well, the card was coming out and then it went back. I was actually in a convertible today and it's pretty windy out. So I put this on because my ears kind of got, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get a cold because it was really windy. Yesterday was really warm. Today was windy. So I put this head skirt off, scarf, head skirt on. Um, so I was in a white convertible today with this lovely lady that I had breakfast with. That was nice. It was nice. I also do intuitive readings, like, live in person, guys. Like, I meet with people and, like, like we do readings and stuff. So, um, you know, if you know me from, like, the area, if you live in Newmarket, if you live in Aurora, if you live in Georgina or whatever, I do meet up with people, um, you know, so... We got two cards here. We got the Ten of Clubs. And I see some group gatherings taking place. Um, it could be a thought. Or it could be that there's an action. It's happening in the physical. Or it could be that um, starting up from now until the full moon. Yeah, there's like some decisions taking place. And there's meetups. There's groups coming together. Spiritual groups. Um, religious groups. I don't like to aim towards religion per se because religion, you know, but there are people that are, that follow me and are interested in my work who are religious. So I'm not going to disrespect or disregard their work. Um, but, you know, whether it's spiritual, you know, let's just call it spiritual because all types of 
things are spiritual when you're really in for the spirit and learning and evolving and growing, okay? Spirit is everywhere. So there's spiritual work involved, and the spiritual work is leading to a new beginning because there's some sort of, like I said, going back, there's some innovation. That's the word I'm looking for. Some innovation that's been taking place internally as well as externally, and it's happening on the physical realm this time. But it's starting fresh. It could be that it's going to be with an extra person that's come in, a new person that's come in, and this person's going to help spice things up, okay? And because of that, two people coming together is, is making room for the old to let go and to go away. So from this full moon up into the wanting moon that takes place after um, April the 22nd, so starting April 23rd and onward, we're going to be entering the waning moon or with the wanting moon. Be sure to, to um, when you do come to realize and jot down and do see in front of your face everything that's shifted and changed and, and that you've manifested within how long, a month, a year, however long, uh, be sure to also come to terms with that which has left you, whether it's internally, whether it's externally, whether it's people, whether it's friends, whether it's a workforce, whether it's a thought, whether it's a mindset, an opinion, um, things that aren't serving you, okay? And be sure to realize what is now serving you, okay? And whatever card that comes up next is going to be what is serving you. But I find it funny how we've got a red theme going on, okay? Um, I also see some water here. So it could be that you're going to be taking a trip near water um, as a getaway or, you know, a spa day because there are like resorts and stuff for spas. Um, I myself, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at a resort on Earth Day and I'm going to be having, I'm going to be having like reflexology done to my feet. I'm going to be having some awesome stuff done to my spine, healing taking place thoroughly. I'm going to be getting facials done. It's going to be so much fun, okay? And I'm going to be near water. I'm going to be giving you guys some readings. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to be drinking a bottle of wine. It's going to be classic. <laughs> so um, that's going to be good. And I got some plans going on there. And it's going to be so much fun. So anyways, going back, I'm going to see now whatever card comes up is going to be the final thing for the full moon. And it's going to be a centered, um, you know, a really centered message, photo slash understanding of something, okay? Or it could just be a little, Okay, you know what? I'm just going to pick a card. I'm just going to pick a card. What will be our last message delivered for the full moon that we might benefit from? Okay, so we got the King of Spades. And so that's the card that came up, okay? Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It could be that, um, do you remember how I first started off the reading, sensing um, that there's a female that needs to work with Rose Quartz watching this? Um you know, working with the rose quartz, do you see how she's touching her heart? And I did say that green is also associated with the heart chakra. Well, you know what I mean? Like, working with rose quartz attracts situations like this. And I do see you uh, benefiting because, as I mentioned, the way you take care of yourself allows another to take care of you that same certain way, okay? It mirrors. It's a mirror effect. So there's a man here who's on his knees wearing red and um, he's passing his crown to her as a way of due respect that he loves her and that they're 
associated as true love, okay? So it could be that you find that your ultimate true love is yourself. You could find that your ultimate true love is your career, your spirituality, your life purpose, your artistic endeavors, your, you as a musician, as an artist, a teacher. It could be that you, you the love of your life is you. It could be that the love of your life is on a journey of self-discovery because we did see that teaching. We also did see that motherliness, okay? Um, and do note that nobody's meant to be alone on the, for the rest of their life, okay? It's, it's a choice that we make. It's a choice, okay? So whatever you do in your life, you will resonate and you will attract to you um, that which you are on, okay? So that is why I highly suggest women and men take care of their heart chakras and take care of themselves and, and give themselves that unconditional loving support because that allows another person to, to treat them that similar way, okay? So speaking of finding out who you are, your bloodline, your roots, um, there you go. He's wearing that, the root color, and she's wearing that unconditional heart color. So, I mean, it ends with what we began. And I did say what, what comes from you comes back to you or what you start, it comes back to you, okay? So, I mean, if you do during this time, from now till the full moon, and if you're going through a hardship, um, excuse me, or if you if you find that in the next couple of weeks you're going through hardship, life will always come with hardship. There will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. There will be people that try to drag you down. There will be people that try to get you to disbehave at, or be a certain way that's not who you are, to disagree with you. That's part of life. And part of life is that disagreement. No one is going to be agreeing with you all the time. It's not going to happen. And until you come to that agreement or until you come to that resolution or uh, solution or acceptance that no one's going to agree with you until you really choose for yourself. This is my life. I get to do what I want to do. Even if people get in your way and try to block you, then you got to find your way to move and slither to different directions out of that and still do what you believe to do. Okay. I'll give you an example. Um, when I was really young, I told my dad, I said, dad, what would you do if I colored my hair purple? He's like, that's fine, but you're not living in with me. You're not living in my house if you do that. And I was like, okay. So then I went to my mom. I was like, mom, what would you do if I dyed my hair blue? And she just started screaming for like two hours. So then I got older and I was like, I want to get my whole body tattooed. I'm like, dad, what would you do if I got my whole body tattooed? He's like, you wouldn't be my daughter anymore. <laughs> And I went to my mom and I'm like, mom, what would you do if I had my whole body tattooed? She's like, I would rip your hair out. And so what did I do? I still dyed my hair purple. I still dyed my hair blue. And I still got my tattoos and I didn't listen to anybody. Okay. So when people block, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm rebelling against them. If that's how they want to view it, sure. Um, you know, but I did what I wanted to do. I did things because I felt I should, because I felt I was being blocked of expressing who I am. I loved my father. I still love him. Um, he's the man I've always loved before anything. My parents, my mother has been, uh, the, the first woman that I've loved before anybody. So any other woman. So for me to still do that, you know, that just goes to show that I'm a strong-willed person and I will still do something because I believe it's right for me and I'm a creative person, I'm an artistic person, so I should do things so that I want to, you know, live. Life is too short. Experience life. Do what you do what you pleases you. So this message can be for a certain person who wants to love their kid um, and maybe puts a little bit of too much certain restrictions 
or wants to give that love to their kid or child or youth or teenager or young adult, um, they, they can feel that maybe that they themselves want to re-experience their youthfulness and maybe have a hard time um, being that, that um, disciplined mother or father to their kid or youth or teenager because they, they maybe want to come across as disciplined and hard, but they themselves are re-emerging into their youth and stuff. So, I mean, I can't say that I know everything because I've never really had a child, physical child, you know. And if I was, I myself would probably have a hard time always being really disciplined because um, I myself am very youthful. Um, I do have a hard side. I do have a very tough side. Um, but I myself, you know, I'm, I'm very independent spirit. I like to do things on my own. I need my own space. I don't like to feel, I don't like to be around neediness. I don't like to, you know, but at the same time, I'm very motherly. I'm very nurturing. I'm very compassionate and very loving. I just need my own space. I need to come into my own self. I need to come into my own energy in order to keep giving, you know? I need that alone time and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so this was the full moon reading, guys. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. Um, I don't know. I just feel that women, you know, as you're very powerful women, you're very powerful and whatever you say and do, your man will follow. Okay. And that's not about saying that men are less powerful or men are less this or, or, or needy and such, but from men have been, you know, Men look to women for guidance. Men look to women for support. Men look, to, and you know, women do so with men too because it's a mirror effect. But the the love and support that a woman gives, it, it's different, you know, it's different. And of course, yeah, it does come together, a man and a woman when they're together. Um, but, and who am I to say, you know, a man, you know, sometimes men are more giving, sometimes men are more loving and such. But when you really are working with yourself, your own spirit and taking care of yourself, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, okay? Guys, you're sending out those vibes to the world and it, that world is returning back to you, okay? That's why I always say you can't blame your outside circumstances because we're doing something to attract them, okay? Or we're not doing something that we should be doing, okay? We're not moving we're not chase shifting something. We're not taking actions towards something. Things are becoming stagnant. And you don't want to be around stagnant energies because there's no movement. There's no growth. There's no evol evol evolving. Okay? So, yeah. Taurus doesn't like changes. If we're going to go through astrological... Uh, we, we're leaving Aries. Aries is all about leadership and taking action, that fiery action, uh, likes to take action before it thinks type of thing, hits with the head before it thinks, you know, prior and stuff or plans. And Taurus is more of a planner. Taurus is more of, I plan and then I hit with my head if you really piss me the fuck off, okay? Um, the, they're, the anger, but they both have anger, but the anger between the two are very different. Um, Aries is more short fused to anger, quick to anger. Taurus has a very slow moving anger, but when it gets angered, the anger, nothing can stop it. And I will admit that myself. So even though I choose to have my anger, I've shifted it all and I, in, I inwardly take it all in and, and then I, 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 you know, I, I, it moves and it shifts in another area because I don't allow myself to get really angered because it makes me sick. I don't like it. You know, like I just purchased another because I, I, I had, if you watch my last videos, um, I get really swollen and stuff and even like my readings and stuff. Um, and I, I, I never got my Theracurmin vitamin pills and 
Star Kerman is great for inflammation and healing the DNA when it's inflamed because I get internal inflammation. It's in my it's in my ancestry. We get inflammation, especially with me. We're very fiery people. Our physical attributes are all fire. And so I take Theracurmin vitamin pills. They're not like, they're all like natural. They're all organic. They're vegan. It's great. But for like two, three, two months, I, two, three months, I wasn't taking them. So I just bought them and I'm going to be taking them again. And it's great, you know. So it works well with me and it heals on a DNA cellular level. And I love that. So, um, do take care of yourselves, guys. Go out in nature. Go for power walks. Go for spiritual walks, do meditation during walks, go jogging. Um, if you're into gardening, start gardening, start planting some seeds, watch them grow, take care of them, you know, go on vacation, go near their water, go have a spa day with your girls, go have a spa day. If you're alone, you know, do things, go have an energy session, go have a recce session. Um, you know, go purchase a reading from someone connect with people, do cardomancy readings, do divination readings, look into your astrological signs, you know, I've left my, left my south node, and now I've entered my north node from Libra to, to, to Aries, so I'm that very, I'm a very naturally fiery person, and that leadership has come forth, okay, so I'm more strongly rooted in my leadership, I've always been a freaking leader, but I, you know, like, since I was two years old, there's videos of me, I'm two years old, we're at Wasega Beach, my family. I'm wearing this red little bathing suit. And my mom is like, come tell her we're leaving. And I'm like, no. And she's like, we're going, we're all leaving. And I'm like, no. And I just walk off. And I'm not even listening to her. Because I'm like, I used to do like these meditation walks. And I'm near the water, so so happy. And I'm just going, and I'm going. And my mom's like, where do you think you're going? Like, you, are you going to stay here? Are you going to sleep here? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> But I was always, I always had that independent, fiery spirit within me. I always wanted to do things on my own. I never liked people telling me what to do, how to do things. I loved my father. He was a very possessive, strong-willed person, very observant. He, his eyes spoke of power. Um, very, very strong-willed. And I have that within me, too. You know, he was very possessive. Um, and I have that within me too. Um, and he didn't like anybody to control him, but he, he would control people. And it was not that he would intentionally do it. It was naturally he would do it because he carried that in his aura and it was a silent way. And when he spoke, this power would come out from him. And I have that within me too. And it's not that I'm bragging, but I've come to realize that I have that within me too. So I'd like for you as a message to deliver to end this reading, I'd like for you to find out what is your internal power? What is your silent power? And when you speak, how are you coming across? Um, be aware of that. Be conscious of that and work with that in a, in a loving light. Um, because when you're aware, it allows for you to work with it in a good way and um, find that, hey, this is a skill. This is an attribute. You know, how can I um, help myself and, and, and being satisfied with myself. And that can go back to fulfilling and filling that part of that rose heart chakra that I was talking about. Okay, guys? So thank you so much for watching. Um, to have a reading or a session with me, visit redearthgoddess.com. Uh, send me an email if you have any questions at all. Even if you're not interested, just send me a message. Send me an email. Comment on this reading. Um, and you can find me at redearthgoddess.com or send me an email at heal at redearthgoddess.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Ciao.